on to more on the GUI. To work with the GUI to provide a user interaction, we have a package called AWT and Swing, which gives us with set of components to work with. That is, let us discuss on AWT. AWT stands for Abstract Window Toolkit. AWT provides us with very limited set of components. Why is it so? Because AWT goes to the OS to build your components. It's all native calls. So if I should be able to provide you with components out here in AWT, it should be such that those components provided in AWT should be possible to generate or create across all platforms. So only those components which are supported by all the platforms are available in the AWT package. That is why AWT package components are limited to a very basic components. You have components like button, text field, choice which is your drop down box, list, your menu related classes, scroll bar, your containers like window, frame, panel, dialog, label. So these are some of the components which are available in AWT. Now let us look at how to create these components and place it onto our application or an applet. Let us say you are writing an applet program and you would like to place a button on an applet. Now, where are you going to create these components? And first question you need to ask is, how many times do I need to create a component? I need to create a component only once. So put it in the init method. If I put the creation of components into a start method, every time the applet goes out of focus and comes back, I get another set of components, so which you wouldn't want to have. So put it into an init method. To create a button object, you say button B is new button or you can pass here a string that is nothing but the label of the button. So once you have created a button, you need to place this button onto a container. Now where is the container to place the button? Now your applet itself is a container. Right, because your applet sits on a browser window, an applet is supposed to be a container. You have specified the width and height for the container while loading an applet. And onto this applet you want to place a button. So a container class has the add method to add a component onto a container. Container is a parent to an applet, an applet is a parent to our button app. So, the add method has been inherited. So, you just invoke add of the component which you want to add to a container that is B1. This places the component onto a container. Let us say button B2 is new button of cancel. or let us say new button. If you want to specify the label later on, you have a set label method. 
using which you can set the label of a button and add the button to the container. Let us say you want to place a checkbox. So, you can place a checkbox by creating a checkbox object. Provide the label for a checkbox. Add the checkbox. If you want the checkbox to be selected when you place it, then you have set selected method of the checkbox to which you can pass a boolean value true, it would be selected. Or another way to do it is here you say comma null comma true so that it would be checked. Now what is this null? We will discuss coming up. Now let us say you want a radio button. There is no radio button class available for you in AWT. You need to use checkbox along with the checkbox group to work with the radio buttons. Of course, if you are just working with a plain checkbox, you get a rectangle shaped uh, UI where you can select it is a usual checkbox. But if you use checkbox group with a checkbo checkbox, then it becomes a radio button circular. It is a exclusively mutually exclusive options. So, let us look at how to create a radio button. To create a radio button, first create a checkbox group object. Once you have a checkbox group object, create a checkbox object for each of the options and group together all these options using the checkbox group object. So, checkbox CB1 is equal to new, let us call here this as CB so that there is no clash. give the labels for each of the checkboxes. <coughs> now, once you have specified the label, you need to pass here the group name, group object to group together each of the checkboxes. So, CBG is the group to which all these three checkboxes are grouped with. So, they will be treated as mutually exclusive options and that is what this null was representing previously because here we are not making it belong to any group as such and whether should it be selected or not. So, let us say true, false and then true. Now, which option would be selected in this case? Is it the first or the last? If you look at it, you have fruits which is rendered and it has been selected, nuts which is rendered and we said false, so it will not be selected. Then we said veggies and then we said true. So, when this gets selected, this gets deselected because it is mutually exclusive. So, the last one would be selected. Similarly, you can work with other components in the AWT package. Now, let us look at how to display a menu. 
Now, if I want to display a menu, I need to work with the frame because frame is the one that lets us work with menus. So, just before moving on to menu example, Let us look at how to place the same GUI components into an application program. If I am writing an application program, we will write the public static void main. we create a button object for instance, if we want to place a button, and then you would want to place these components onto a container. Now where is the container for this? There is no container in case of an application. You need to create a container for your application. Now, this container has to be a window because there is no window available as such. And this window is nothing but a frame. There is a window class. Window class does not provide you with the borders and the menu bar. So, it is the frame which is a full fledged window, which is derived actually from the window class of AWT. Both dialog and frame are derived from window class. So, we need to create a frame object. Either create a frame object or derive this class from a frame, a frame class does not matter. So, let us say frame fr is equal to new frame. You can specify the title of the frame out here to be displayed on the title bar of the window. You need to specify the size of a container, right? So, you need to call the set size method on the frame. Specifying in pixels the width and the height of the frame. Then onto the frame add the components B1 and B2. Now, once the components are added to the frame, then bring out the frame, display the frame itself. To display the frame, you call the set visible method. Passing the boolean value, true. This brings out the frame with the components. Now, notice here that the components are added before the frame visibility is brought out. If suppose you have a requirement of adding a component after the frame has been brought out, then you must call a validate method on the frame, so that it redraws all the child components and the frame again, so that you can see the components. Otherwise, if I were to add the components after bringing the visibility of the frame or the container in general, then the components will not be visual on the container. So, in case you are doing the other way around, we need to call fr dot validate at the end. The validate method will pass through the entire contents of the container, redraws everything from the child con component to the parent component that is your frame here. Now, let us look at the menu example. In the menu 